Anton. Okay. So we're going to talk about uh, pottery selection today. And um, what I wanted to kind of uh, bring up is that pottery selection is kind of like one of the three facets that we need to learn uh, when we're doing bonsai. First is, well, of course, styling the tree and how to make it look good, how to get the right proportions, and all the, all the techniques that go along with that. Second is a, is a type of pottery that it's almost like, um, what was that? Uh, when, you, when you go to, out to dinner and you take your wife to a, this fancy dinner and she goes, you don't want her to wear her bathrobe and her slippers, you know. So it, it's, it's something that enhances the tree. maybe brings out a certain characteristics of the tree um, that you, you w would like to. We'll, we'll talk about that in a second. And the, and the last part is uh, displaying your bonsai in a show uh, to the correct method of, of the tree and the accent and the stands and the dies, all that working together. So, you know, it's some, I think some people which is good, they, they learn how to do the tree, but then when it comes to showing the tree in a show, you know, you could tell that they haven't put much thought into the pot itself and how it looks that way. So I brought a few uh, different pots here that uh, we'll kind of discuss. And uh, a lot of times uh, <clears throat> forest pottery, forest plantings, group plantings, are in these kind of shallow uh, pots like this. And most often they're oval, oval shaped, uh, but this happens to be a rectangle. Um, in single trees, say we have a Generally, about we begin at about two thirds the height of the tree. So uh, the length of the pod is about roughly two thirds the height of the tree. And a lot of times, idea in ideal situations, the the trunk should be uh, larger than or at the same size as the depth of the pot. So the depth should equal, let's see, equal or less than, I guess let's do that. Equal or less than uh, the trunk thickness. Business. It could be the same depth as the pot, the same width as the depth of the pot, or the, the trunk could be wider than the depth of the pot. Okay. So <clears throat> that's why you know there's such a, a, a myriad of pots and shapes and colors. Because uh, sometimes we're, we're trying to enhance maybe the color of the trunk. Um, that's why there's a lot of brown pots. So maybe this trunk has a certain, certain color brown that we may want to match it, you know, to some, some sort of color brown. Sometimes the trunks are gray, like an olive tree. And so you might want to consider maybe a gray pot. Uh, some pots, um, well, some trees have a, 
maybe a real quirky texture. And so getting a pot that has some texture on it maybe enhances that, that tree in that pot. So it all, it all depends on what you, know, you want to uh, bring up. And, and also, uh, I just brought some small pots because they're easy to carry. But, but uh, sometimes we may have a maple that has a real pretty fall color. And so uh, it's, they're nice in some sort of blue color to, to kind of accentuate that fall color. So this is a, would be a real pretty one for a, a maple. Um, there's pots with, with feed on them, like this. This is called a cloud foot pot. And you might not have heard of this, but uh, pottery kinds of kind of categories of pots. Uh, masculine pots are pots with uh, a strong lip and maybe uh, a strong angle to these corners. So Feminine pots tend to be uh, round or oval. And uh, so, okay, so round or oval. And uh, they have a generally softer line. So, uh, so let's take these two pots for some. This would be a, a masculine pot because the, the pot lip is strong and the angle is, is real strong. And it even has these angles in the middle. This would be maybe used more for a feminine tree like, uh, oh I didn't mention that, like maples or deciduous trees are in that feminine uh, category. Junipers um, may have a real smooth lines to the trunks, and uh, when they do that, then it, it could lend itself more toward uh, a more feminine pot. Um, and deciduous trees, you know, they could be real rigid, you know, too. And being real rigid lines could kind of cross the line a little bit more masculine. Tendencies, but um, oops. Okay, so feminine pots also um, can be. They can be glazed. Um, 
put on? So feminine, feminine, oh, did you say something? Yeah. What would you put a pomegranate? Okay, pomegranates are usually deciduous. Oh, yeah, deciduous. Yeah. So it would maybe tend to go in a, a more round or oval pot. Like, I think this would be a really good pot for me. pomegranate. It doesn't have the color of it, but it, uh, it's a nice, if it's a real thick crystal. Or even this one, actually. Even this one. See, when, when a pot has these, these little bumps here, that's supposed to represent uh, like a flower petal, like uh, sakura, cherry blossom. So uh, that gives it that. Uh, even though this is a bold pot, it's, it's really, it can be used for deciduous or flowering. Well, yeah, it depends on the style. The style, if it's a real angular movement, then you may want to have a, a pot that's more masculine on the masculine side. But if it's more upright and delicate, like a maybe like an oak tree or something, then that tends to be more on the feminine side. Um, okay, one other thing. When you uh, put a tree in a pot, see, this is a rectangle, we're looking at from the top. Um, say this Moyogi tree. We want to have it just uh, to the left. Say this is the longest branch. So this area would have the longest space in the pot. This would be a shorter space. So you want to put the pot, I mean the tree in the pot about here. Okay, so the movement of the tree goes like this and that. And so it feels like if, if it's over this way, then the tree doesn't feel like it's falling out of the pot. So it gives an extra space. If, if it's in a round pot, uh, any kind of round pot or symmetrically round pot. We plant it right in the middle. So uh, I didn't bring a cascade pot. A cascade pot is a tall pot. doesn't come below the bottom of the pot. A uh, formal cascade comes down the bottom of the pot. Okay. Uh, let's see. We're all um, trying to create this tree here, this work of art uh, in our collection that's old or ancient looking. And so, we try to pick containers that also give it that feeling of age and antiquity. So, like uh, the the prized pottery in Japan or antique pots from China, or antique pots in general, but uh, Chinese pots. And this is one right here. This is uh, it's sort of characterized by big holes. And this bottom is concave this way. So when the water gets in there, it drains to each hole like that. But uh, yeah, this is probably, well, way over 150 years old. But anyway, you could, you could kind of feel the pods. It tends to be, and when it gets older, it has this what's called patina, that natural patina that comes from age. 
that's what, you know, we, we don't always find these antique pots out here. So, uh, you know, it's nice if you have one, but then to have one that fits your tree is another thing too. You know, it's like you could keep buying pots and uh, you may not have the right pot for the tree. So I recommend when you're, when you're starting out is, and, and pottery is a, it's kind of a neat thing where, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty to get these different kind of pots, but you don't always have the right tree for it. So in the beginning, it's better to just get the tree for your pot, or, or pot for your tree, so you don't have too many things. Okay? Oh, and I brought this one because it looks too new. You know, it looks like it came off the assembly line yesterday. So we want to make sure that you know, we pick a pot if it's important to you. You know, it might be good for a training pot for some tree, but if it's going to go in the show, you might want to consider a more aged-looking tree a pot. It has some, it has some old age to it. Okay, let's see. If there's any questions? Yeah. Flipping it over to me doesn't mean much unless you can read this down. Yeah. They just know it's a good pot. How do you know that? Well, okay. Uh, well, if, you, if you've been around bonsai uh, pottery and bonsai trees a long time, you know that some of these pots, like this one here, uh, came imported in the 70s, probably the 70s and the 80s. And so, it's just, I guess you just have to be around long enough to know that. You know, uh, some pots, like this one here, is uh, kind of not a real, at the time when they were imported in, in sort of the 70s and 80s too, uh, this is called Shigaraki, Shigaraki pot. And they were kind of a rough made pot, you know, it's kind of a, kind of a, a potter that was, I don't know, but it's kind of not real refined. But nowadays, uh, uh, I think the interest in Shigaraki pots are more, are getting more and more valuable because, uh, you know, they're, they're definitely unique looking. They're not just a, a place pots. Um, but yeah, you just have to see a lot, you know. You just have to look and see a lot. <coughs> I know. You know, they, they have these websites where they have uh, different stamps. You know, they, they, uh, you can find out what the potter was and when they did their work and things. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not an expert on that. And also, uh, speaking of that, you know, this pot here, this Chinese pot, which is way over 100, maybe 150 years old, this has. The older pots don't don't have a signature on it either. It was just um, you know maybe some person in uh, the pottery industry way back when just did that. This is what they did for a living, you know. And they puffed out these pots, but it wasn't important for them to have their them notarized, you know, their, their, their name out there. So. The old one. Now the newer Chinese pots do have stamps on them too. Uh, any questions? Yeah. Um, I notice some pots that are the same size. Certain ones feel noticeably weightier or heavier than others. Is that an indication of quality or something we should differentiate between, or is it kind of just? Well, uh, they say uh, that you really want to. I don't know if this really holds true. They say that uh, you really want to have a pot that's kind of has a lighter weight to it uh, because when you get that tree in there, it's you know it's easier to handle. Um, I know that a lot of uh, Korean pots have a real uh, dense clay, and they usually have thick walls, and so they're they're heavier pots. And, uh, but it's just a matter of I think really, good. if it looks good in that pot, I, I think it's okay. Okay, so 
It's hard to it's hard to really you know I, t I could talk about pots, but it's hard to visualize it without the trees in there. You know, I'm sorry about that. When should you start looking or start thinking about investing in pots? When's the when's the ideal like time frame from you know producing your tree to putting into a pot? What is that? Time frame kind of looks like. Well, if you're you, if you've just developed a tree, you know, in a class, you, you know, it might take a uh, maybe a year or two to to start getting the, the pads ready, the branches shaped up nicely. So maybe you know if it's looking good after a couple years, after you start working on it, I think that's a good time to start looking for pots. Uh, it depends, you know. If you have a lot of money, you could buy a real nice tree right away <laughs> put it in your pot. But, but uh, you know, when you're creating your own, I think it takes a couple years really to start to get the feel about how big. And see, one thing too is I have some trees that I thought, okay, I learned about both sides, I learned about picking a pot. And I have this tree, this beautiful pot, you know, it works, looks good, right color and everything, right uh, proportion. And as years went on, it got bigger. You know, not that it got taller, but it just got more massive. And sometimes, uh, you know, you may change your mind about that pot being the perfect pot after a while. Because, you know, it's not, a, it's not an art form that just stays there, you know. And, uh, so, yeah, there's some trees that I have that, well, I've changed the pots a couple times, you know, because the tree itself has grown out of that, that proportion. But, uh, so anyway, yeah, it's, it's kind of ongoing art form. Okay, any, any other questions? Or? Yes? Um, this isn't directly related to the pots, but you mentioned earlier that new looking one being maybe a good candidate for training a tree in. Right. How do you, um, I guess, how do you determine Oh, like nursery oh, okay. Yeah, how that's you, a good. Yeah, how do you decide? Well, uh, for 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 me, uh, I use I I either put them in a, a larger growing can or container and, and train them that way, and then once they get um, kind of the mass I need and the branch structure, I'll start reducing the size year after year of the shallowness of the, the root ball, and then I'll. By doing that, I'll kind of know, okay, well, this is, it'll probably fit in this size pot, you know, this tree, the, the girth is the, the right size for that pot. And so, but I was just saying that, uh, you know, if you have a, a showing pot that, or a tree that you're uh, fighting to get a pot for, but it may not, you might not have it, and it might be not the right time of year. Uh, you didn't, haven't had the right time to get that pot that you want. So you have this there sitting, sitting on the shelf, and then you can put it in there for temporary sake. But, but uh, until it's, you know, for me, getting a tree in a pot is kind of like a, a celebration because I have some trees that I just potted. That I started when we got married 35 years ago, and I just potted it. Uh, this last winter <laughs> so it depends it depends what you know you how much you want your tree to be developed you know when we're, we're get, young and bonsai we, we want to get that tree in a pot so we see what it looks like you know but yeah, I don't know it depends it depends on the person Oh, I want to say, uh, I'm be starting a beginning class, full side class, gym 10, Saturday 8 to 10 at, at my house in uh, Lytle Creek. And uh, they, <clears throat> it's, uh, let's see, what was it, it's $75 a person plus materials. So if you have your own tools, you don't have to buy tools, uh, wire. It, so if you didn't have any tools, plants or wire, it includes, the plants would be um, 
consistency with everything. Probably you'll be paying like 220, 230, uh, including the class. And there are five classes, and we go over the first uh, five styles of bonsai uh, chokan, uh, sokan, parshakan, uh, fukinagashi windswept, uh, cascade, and pohoyogi. So we do each, we each make a, a tree and have those shapes. And I'll probably, it's going to be every two weeks on a Saturday. So Saturday morning, my wife says I gotta do it early in the morning so people can get, get on with their Saturday. <laughs> yeah, so, so if you're interested, uh, give me a, uh, text me or uh, email me, and uh, we could get you signed up. I have, I think I have, uh, I know one, maybe two people signed up already. And, I only want to have six in the class, so there's four slots, at least four slots. Okay? So just let you know. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you.